Tom Clancy's The Division 3 is now in development at Massive Entertainment. This strikes me as interesting, and I've talked about this before because if you remember from my previous videos or previous announcements, Massive Entertainment is the same studio working on Star Wars Outlaws and Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, and now they're building a team for Tom Clancy's The Division 3 before Outlaws or Avatar has even come out. This is crazy to me. Three different games all being worked on potentially simultaneously. Before I posed the question of how are they going to do this when they were just working on, when I only knew they were working on Outlaws and Avatar. Now there's a third game in the mix. Another open world, large scale, ambitious title. How are they pulling this off? How is Massive Entertainment living up to all this hype? Massive Entertainment, are they really a massive studio? How many people can they possibly have employed there? Wiki says over 750 plus as of 2023. This is wild. So they're currently still supporting Tom Clancy's The Division 2 as it says it's active on their website. Then we have Frontiers of Pandora upcoming. Outlaws upcoming, and we don't even have the Division 3 yet up on their website. Now let's check the job listings for these other games. So currently for Avatar, we have Animation Director, Gameplay Animator, Lead, Technical Animator, and Senior AI Programmer. Those three seem like pretty important higher level positions. We're in the final stages more so of development because we have mostly animation roles. You know, these are polish, finishing touches, you know, making things look seamless and fluid. And, but still, if they're looking for an animation director and then on Outlaws, they're looking for a junior cinematic artist this kind of tells me that they are later in development for both of these games. And we saw a, a decent vertical slice of gameplay from both of these in their respective announcements and trailers and everything like that. So I, I think these are fairly far along projects, but they're still looking for staff. So they're still probably not done right now. It's very plausible that these two projects are both so far along that they no longer need a lot of the staff that would work on the earlier stages of development. They don't have anything to do at this point for these two games. So now they're going to get moved over to the Division 3's team and they're going to start laying the foundation over there. Their job has, is done. It's finished at this point for Outlaws and Avatar. That's my theory. But still, polishing up two licensed franchise huge massive titles ambitious open world games and with open world games as we saw with starfield lately um there's a lot of variables right making open world games is very difficult and there's a lot that can go wrong and there's a lot of bugs that can happen there's a lot of polish that they need and even when you've done the most polish you think you possibly could and the most qa testing you possibly can there's still going to be issues people are still going to find stuff so it's a lot it's ambitious to make even a single open world game at once let alone two, let alone three, right? And none of these have been released yet. And some of them don't even have exact release dates announced, right? So it's a bit of a moving target as well. They're still looking for staff for a few of these projects. They are probably very late in development for Avatar and they're probably later in development for Star Wars Outlaws because I don't see, I mean, there's no major roles here that they're looking for Outlaws. So they're probably full steam ahead in the thick of production for that game at the moment. Uh, Avatar is probably just getting finished up and now pre-production, early production starting on the Division 3. I tr would trust that this studio owned by Ubisoft who has a lot of experience, like I would trust that they have the resources, they have the manpower, they know what they're doing as far as splitting all this attention between three massive ambitious projects, two of them licensed. And there's a lot riding on this because mind you, Star Wars Outlaws is not only said to be the first open world Star Wars game, which is kind of not true because Star Wars Galaxies exists. That was an MMORPG. Star Wars The Old Republic exists. I, I don't know. I guess you don't consider those open world if they're MMOs, whatever. But it is the first Ubisoft helmed Star Wars game. So that's ambitious, right? That's like already 
big. That's a big deal. That's a lot riding on that for Ubisoft to prove that they can do good with the Star Wars license, which for video games, when it comes to Star Wars, it should be a cash cow. It should be a shoe in It should be a layup, right? Star Wars is ripe with opportunity for cool gameplay experiences, cool stories, cool stuff to do in video games and interactive experiences, more so arguably than it, it even is for the television and movies. It's a big deal that Ubisoft Ubisoft knocks this out of the park and proves that they can do justice with this franchise and this intellectual property to not just be just all in on Outlaws and Avatar at the same time. It's ambitious. It's very ambitious. And one thing that Ubisoft is not known for is its excessive polish upon launch, right? So I'm very concerned that these games are going to be rife with uh, lack of polish, bugs, issues at launch. It's going to really hold back both Star Wars Outlaws and Avatar Frontiers of Pandora and maybe even The Division 3. In my opinion, this is not the time to stress test your development process and the strength of your staff and development team. This is not the time to test that. When you have Avatar as a franchise on the line, you have Star Wars on the uh, on the line, and you have your own biggest intellectual property that you've created as a studio, as Massive, which is The Division, and a much anticipated sequel to that game. This is not the time to stress test. This is not the time to go balls to the wall and try to do the most and try to just throw everything at the wall and see what sticks. Like this is a time you got to get focused and you got to do justice to these different titles. And I really feel like they're spread too thin here. Even with 750 people, man, like it takes an army to make even one amazing game, let alone three at once. I just do not see these games being polished, amazing, super tight experiences out of the box. I think they're going to be very rough around the edges to begin with, and they may or may not have a lot of post-launch support that gets them to where they need to go because these developers are going to put the game out. They're going to put Avatar out, right? And then they're going to have to get right over to supporting Outlaws as it's coming out. And then they're going to have to get right over to to supporting The Division 3 as it comes out. And this studio isn't going to infinitely just keep hiring staff to manage all three of these titles as they're coming out. They're going to be moving staff around. They're not hiring a whole new team to make The Division 3, right? They're taking the people who are done what they need to do on Frontiers of Pandora and Outlaws. They're taking them off those those projects and they're moving them over to the division three they're not they're not just just expanding their team infinitely for every project so that being said there's a finite amount of resources when it comes to manpower at least just at minimum let alone money <laughs> let alone everything else but when it comes to manpower there's a finite amount of resources and to spread all of that between three projects at once that's risky that's tons and tons of risk that you're incurring especially with high stakes intellectual properties like Star Wars, Avatar, and your biggest flagship IP, The Division. So I'm saying their biggest IP for Massive, because Massive Entertainment is most well known for The Division. That's their baby. That's their world that they've built and nurtured for two games now. It got a sequel somehow. I didn't even think The Division 1 was that popular, so I was surprised when I got a sequel, and I'm still a little surprised it got a third, because I didn't hear The Division 2 was that great either, but whatever, all right? I think that, you know, good for them, it's fucking ambitious, man, and I, I wonder how much of that is Ubisoft uh, cracking the whip and saying, you got to do this, you got to do it all, you got to do the most massive, or how much of it is their own, I want to say hubris, I'm not trying to be mean, but it does feel like a lot of hubris to me. Like I said, man, Bethesda has been balls to the wall making Starfield for years, right? And that game still has problems. That game still has bugs. That game still has a lack of polish in a lot of aspects. That game still could have been a lot better. Could have had a lot more time in the oven, if you ask me. And that was open world. That was ambitious. That was blah, blah, blah. I'm just saying, man. Like, And they were fully committed to Starfield. Whole team almost. Very small amount of the team was doing Elder Scrolls Six early production, very, very early pre-production stuff, very small number of people. The rest working on Starfield 
completely full throttle. So think about that. I don't know, guys. Like, I'm not, I'm saying what I, the ultimate takeaway here that I'm going to say wait for Avatar Frontiers of Pandora to come out, wait for Star Wars Outlaws to come out, wait for The Division 3 to come out, wait to see reviews, wait to see what people say about it, watch gameplay, see how polished they are, see how good it really is before you buy, before you spend your hard-earned money on it because I'd say there's a high, high likelihood these games are going to have problems at launch and it might be worth waiting or it might be worth staying away from them, unfortunately, if they look just a little too messed up let me know your thoughts down below guys are you excited that they're making the division three or are you also a little concerned that uh they're spread a little too thin here but are you still going to get outlaws and avatar nonetheless are you big fans of those franchises I i'm not gonna lie i mean outlaws is tempting but uh I don't know. I, it's it's a mixed bag right now for me. I, I got to see a little bit more before I would pull the trigger on some of these games. It really means a lot to me when you guys like the video. If you enjoy it, it lets me know you like that kind of content and I should keep doing it. And it also means a great deal to me when you guys subscribe. Hit that bell as well to get notifications. Subscribing is free. Please subscribe if you enjoy and you want to see more videos like this. I cover a wide range of topics in tech and video games and a bunch of other stuff that interests me. I hope you enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. It means the world to me. You have no idea. And I'll see you on the next one. I hope you're having a great day.